Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to our mental health awareness right here in Self Discovery Media.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Janine Regan Sinclair. She's the conscious architect, a certified therapist, medical intuitive, international speaker. She is qualified in hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy counseling, neurolinguistics programming, NED realignment. She's an author of four books and 35 self help audio programs. She specializes in post traumatic growth, helping people overcome all kinds of trauma, either one to one or with her revolutionary digital audio programs. She has a consulting room in London, and she treats internationally by Skype or by telephone. And uh, the healing system, um, she calls it Crystal Kai, pronounced key, Crystal Key, healing system. She started this in 2003, and as a, a medical intuitive speaker, uh, she you know, speaks for herself. So we're going to be talking about this conscious architect today, how it fits in at the present moment when we're looking at the current state of the world. Uh, we're looking at a world that's in trouble at the moment. It's in trouble globally. It's in trouble um, <clears throat> emotionally, physically, uh, spiritually. And uh, there's a great deal of trauma at the present moment going on with not knowing where we're going, uh, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, is this pandemic ever going to be over? Uh, are we going to be able to see our families at our festive time? And I think what we're looking at at the present moment is we all need a lot of help, don't we, Janine? Welcome to we the do, show. We certainly do. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. I was commenting before about your lovely background being autumn leaves and everything. And in a way, it, it's, a, it's a resemblance of... Uh, how nature in its beautiful wisdom, you know, from death always comes life, doesn't it? And if we, if we could look at trauma in that same way, life will always come out of a traumatic experience, but it's not something we're always capable of, is it? Well, no, everybody is human and everybody at some point in their life is going to go through trauma. Unfortunately, it's part of the journey. What's happening at the moment is um, it's a mass trauma. You know, the energy, the energy across the world. So I, I do feel very deeply for people that are so engrossed in the fear of this. And I highly recommend people don't watch the news because it's <laughs> a scientific fact that it actually damages your immune system. And that's one of the most important things we need at the moment is to keep our immune system boosted. Personally, um, I, I think there's a lot of fear mongering going on with oh. the s statistics and um, we're talking about, you know, one in 300,000, they say, chance of, you know, this actually killing you. It's a very small percentage and it, the symptoms are um, like a very bad flu. So I understand older people being worried and people that have got asthma or maybe, you know, lung problems or something like that. But I think most of us, if um, we did catch this flu, that we, you know, we would get over it. The statistics, when you look at the deaths, in comparison to how many people have been diagnosed, the actual death rate is very small. So the fear is in the atmosphere, unfortunately. And there's lots of things people can do quite easily, like playing classical music with the intention of dissipating the, the, you know, the energy and learning to meditate, just go within, you know, being out in nature as well. I mean, I know some people are on lockdown, but even sitting outside in your own back garden is nature. Um, and and going outside when it's windy as well the yes. wind you can use use the wind to blow away and you know negative energy around you and even the sun it, I mean it's winter now but the sun's out brilliant white light in the sky today I go out into the garden and you know breathe in the light of the sun when it's there as much as I can people can sun gaze if, if anybody's have you heard of sun gazing yeah you, yeah yeah 
it's kind of getting like a, a direct infusion <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of, yeah of light energy mm. exactly well i um found out a while back about sun gaze, gazing and I, I discovered a guy that was talking about baptism with the sun baptism with air baptism with fire baptism with water we go through the being birthed and Yes. And then we're, you know, some people are baptized with water, but you can be baptized with air. So you can go out and stand in the wind on a windy day and ask the wind to cleanse you, in, you know, and, and clear out the these toxic energies and the fear. And, you know, be specific. If you're feeling anxious, ask it to blow your anxiety away. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a wind this, person. I'm an air person. Uh, yeah. Actually, we have a beautiful windy day today, so I'm watching all the trees dance, which is wonderful. And I love going out in the wind and just ah, clearing the air, you know, just yeah. cleansing it out. And, and of course, water as well, conduit of water. Um, I'm less a feet on the soil person because I feel Earth's vibration and I know it's in trouble. But mm -hmm. I love the, you know, on a sunny day and when it's windy, as you said, the warmth of the sun or just the glow of the sun and the wind clearing everything out and if you could be by water as well that yeah. wonderful conduit feeding you it there's nothing more exhilarating is there exactly when i mean in the sun you can you can ask the sun to burn out any negative programs yeah. in you sun gazing people generally do it within an hour of sunrise or before sunset an hour before when the sun's low in the sky and it's not you know as brightest and you can kind of squint and stare into the yeah. sun. But if you set your intention that you're asking, you know, the, the light of the sun to come through and burn out all programs and patterns that don't serve your highest good, it will do that. And people that may be a clairvoyant can actually see like grids of energy mm -hmm. coming through them when they do it. So there's, there's lots of things people can be doing that don't cost anything and will really help with what's going, you know, what's going on, the stress and the trauma that's going on throughout yeah. the world at the moment and you know a good dose of common sense you know um yeah, whether it, you, you look upon it as a flu and not does anyone want it i am an asthmatic i did get the asian flu when i was two um mm -hmm. 64 years ago and it did damage my lungs for the rest of my life and yeah. so you know for some people you don't you know they saw somebody a Trumpster with a t-shirt saying, I'd rather get COVID than wear a mask. I think that's rather ridiculous. You know, it, it's consideration when you're going out, just just put on a mask and have some distancing and wash your hands. There's no big deal in that. It's common sense because you don't want to get the flu anyway, whether it's COVID or flu, you don't want to get it and you don't want to pass it on to anyone vulnerable. So I think if you could not buy into the fear, but just plug in the common sense Mm -hmm. uh, and as you said, keep your immune system strong, eat well, watch things that are going to lift you up, you know, yeah. that are going to be joyous and uh, get out into nature. I mean, that is kind of the first antidote, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And we, are you probably aware we've got this big shift, um, the planetary alignment on the 21st of December as well. So there's a lot of new energies coming in. Yes, yes. And, good know, energy, please. Yes, yes. <laughs> good energy. That's what we need. A lot of light coming, coming back in. But there is a, we're on this ascension path, as many people know, and, you know, that our consciousness is separating into two different frequency bandwidths mm. and the third dimensional and the fifth dimensional so there's a lot going on at the moment on many levels for people it's not just the emotional trauma or the, the stress of the mind it's the spiritual development going on and people are being forced to deal with their stuff yeah it's you know it's coming up and if we've got fear there we need to deal with it and not let it manifest into something bigger and even be you know illness itself it's um it's a byproduct of fear and anxiety and this kind of thing so it really is important that people make an effort to change their energy field and like you say laughter great yeah. thing watch funny movies yes and then you know don't watch the news watch a comedy well the only way i ever do watch anything to do with the news is through comedians because it's the oh, only way okay. you can take it you know i mean <laughs> yeah. It was interesting the other day we're over here in North America, we have a, a, a comedian talk show host called Colbert and he was interviewing um, Obama. And, you know, one of the comments that he made is that since, you know, Trump lost the election, uh, how much calmer everybody's beginning to feel. Nobody realized how tensed up they were. 
And mm -hmm. I think they've been tensed up for four years and then add the pandemic with it. And, you know, somebody who was stirring it up, stirring up the hysteria. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And people were just kind of walking by and going, <laughs> sucked into that hurricane. And yeah. it's like, what the hell is going on as they're twisting around? And as you said, if you watch the news or if you listen to another one of his tweets or anything else, it was, was I call it shoot stirring. And, you know, it is like, oh, God, get me the hell out of here. And, yeah. you know, I think that's, you know, you've got it in England as well. Yeah, You know, is there a country right now that doesn't have that going on? And we're seeing people really kind of, um, well, the fear and the panic is definitely coming up. And we're seeing so much kind of negative protesting and becoming violent. And I have a show this week on domestic violence rising during this period somewhere along the line we need to take a deep breath don't we because absolutely we may feel traumatized about what's going on but what we're doing is causing more trauma yeah to ourselves with the reaction so we need to take a nature chill pill <laughs> absolutely absolutely i've been talking to you know i've met people i'm not into politics at all mm. um, but uh, you know there's a lot of conversation going on you oh, can't yeah. avoid it with people no. at the moment and I just keep reminding them about the divide and conquer thing. Mm. You know, we need to be bringing people together. We need to be yes. uniting because all of this stuff that comes through the media is, you know, it's, it's there to control people in, into certain directions. Yes. And it's gone beyond even truth now. There's so much information coming all over social media and this kind of thing that it's distorting the truth. Mm -hmm. People are being turned against one another mm -hmm. when, you know, the ascension process is about unification. It's yes. about people coming together and there is no right or wrong side. You know, we don't want sides. We, want we just people... don't want anger. We just don't yeah, want anger. It's... Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I can't get my head around how people can be so venomous. Over... I know politics it's like where's all this hate coming from and then it dawned on me that it's old stuff coming out of our mm. dna we've mm. got the you know we inherit they say i've read one to 18 zeros of imprints from our ancestral lineage oh yes that's a quintillion yes now Don't forget most of us, life as well <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. multi-dimensional yes. lifetimes you mm -hmm. know i'm obviously celtic <laughs> yeah, <one too. laughs> so, yeah definitely, you know there's definitely war down my family lineage yeah. my ancestral lineage and and all of this stuff is being purged at the moment and that's right. what we're seeing in the world around us yes. so it's critical that people find a center either do the sun gazing to cleanse or meditate to cleanse bringing in the white light to purify whatever they're seeing, whatever's been brought up to them, the manipulation, the control, the lies, all of these things. It's a projection of what we've got in our own consciousness and our DNA. So we need to take responsibility for that. Big, 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 big one there. Take responsibility. Because, you know, while we're pointing fingers at everyone else, there's three pointing back at us. I was given a saying three years ago that the universe is going to shake us up to wake mm -hmm. us up for us to step up and change it up we've yeah. been shaken we've certainly been woken some people have been woken to the terror and the fear some people yeah. have been woken to the opportunity and the enlightenment but whatever it is we have to stand up and change it up because this yeah. is the invitation from the universe right now isn't it absolutely i say to people um i've been teaching workshops in astral projection and akashic records and that type of thing but when they see something they're watching on on tv or the internet that doesn't they don't like they you know meditating bringing the white light into it bringing asking if you believe in god one i tend to use the word one because there's mm. too many gods and different religions out there there is right. only one one right um bring that energy in and ask it to remove this from your consciousness from your dna neutralize it bring it into neutral Mm. we've got all of this love and light love and light love and light and it never really truly resonated with me and and this is why because when i realized that the more we push the love and light the more you get the dark and hate because of the new the duality yes the yin yang so it's a, mm. the yin yang you know is, is a constant battle going on but when I, we merge the two yeah. into neutral can you imagine living in a world where everyone was neutral um you know the thing is 
I was in the dark for a number of years where I, I kind of lost the connection between my soul wisdom um, and, you know, because my heart kind of shut down there for a while and I was in the dark. I could see the light and I was in the dark, almost um, apathetic. You know, not empath empath empathetic, apathetic, and and it took me a while to come back out. And when I came mm -hmm. out, I could feel the shadows of the dark chasing me. Don't turn around. Don't look at it. Uh, yeah. Just keep walking towards the light. And then I reached a period where I became at one with source and self, uh, where I am happy to go into the dark now, because what yeah. I realize is I am the light in the dark. Yes, exactly. You've got it. You know, people are running away. They're holding their dark side, their shadows and separation and pointing the finger out there. They're doing this to us. They're, yeah. you know, that this totalitarian government, them, 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 they manipulating, they're lying. Go within because mm -hmm. everything is a projection of you. When people understand that and don't take it personally, right. your DNA, your DNA is manifesting your reality. It's the software in the program projecting out into the five senses illusion of reality, the physical world. We are the co-creators. People mm. need to take back their power in a, not in a beating themselves up, really, am I responsible for all that, you know, horrible stuff that's going on? It's not that you're physically responsible as, you know, you, Sarah, or me, Janine. It's your DNA, it's your consciousness. It's, you know, it's that, those programs that are being projected out so that we can recognize them and going oh yeah i'm seeing manipulation oh yeah i'm seeing lies i need to bring the light into that part of my own shadow yeah change and, channels and change the channel exactly yes. not ignoring it though because no. this is the other problem people do tend to ignore and it gets pushed down and it's still the program repeating itself and that's mm. what's happening at the moment you know history is repeating itself that there's a big, big, it's like the boil has to burst before it can heal, unfortunately. And that boil is festering at the moment. But, you know, the big word responsibility is that, you know, why we've been taught and conditioned to give our lives over to higher powers, not necessarily the source powers, but the human powers who yes. will tell us exactly how to live our lives. Yeah. And now we don't like the way they're telling us to live our lives and we're in rebellion. Well, there's accountability in your rebellion. Mm -hmm. of what are you going to do to raise your frequency, raise your vibration? What are yeah. you going to do to be a participant and a contributor to yeah. the solution? Because if ever there was an invitation, it is right now. Yeah, definitely. I was talking last week about the lost principle of care. Mm. You know, people need to care enough to get off their backsides and do yes. something about it you know there are protests going on and i i think it would be shameful if people didn't be weren't allowed to get together with their families at, at christmas as you know like you said as long as people are being safe if you've got elderly people take care of them um but leaving them on their own is probably yeah. going to do them more harm than you all going to visit them wearing your masks right you know yeah. because of the, the loneliness and the and the sadness and with a lot of old people it may be their last christmas right you know exactly. this is the situation so yeah I there's the emotional as well-being as well as the physical well-being and I, i've done many shows in the past and only the lonely and yeah. you know uh, people being left alone and and if if you you know too fearful to go in and see them then you can at least leave a parcel by their door or phone them or encourage yeah. them to try and get on skype if they have a computer do something to communicate but don't yes. just ignore them because that loneliness is a death sentence in itself absolutely you know it's, it, and this social distancing is another thing i mean yeah. it's, it's a fact that human beings need touch holding yeah. someone raises you know improves your immune system a hug it's you know simple human contact that's what we're here to experience it, you know the love and the emotions yeah. and the, that side of it and and to deny people that if these um facts and figures are correct you know it's still a very small percentage of death rate if if they're being exaggerated then somebody you know needs to be brought to justice for that and i'm sure that will happen Mm -hmm. If that's the case, you know, the truth always prevails. It has to. And that's yeah. what... You know, the, the hindsight. Yes. Yeah. You know, but the point is, is 
We know it's out there and we don't know who's under it, but it's not just the old and the affirm. It's there's plenty of young people as well. And of course, the young people are the carriers. So you can hug grandma. Make sure your hands are clean. Make sure your clothes mm -hmm. are clean. Make sure you are wearing a good, strong mask. Right. But you can still put your arms around her, even if you want to mm -hmm. come from behind and give her a hug. You know, yeah. there's still ways of doing things. I'm an asthmatic have fibromyalgia as well. I hug my kids when I see them because um, I am being cautious. I'm wearing the masks where I need to wear them. I'm making sure that my hands are clean and so are they. But I know, as you said, the importance of that hug and the importance of as well-being of being together. As long mm -hmm. as we are sensible and considerate about it, we can make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. And in some people have been really very traumatized by it. Oh, some yes. people have, have suffered loss as well. And, my, you know, my heart goes out to them in sympathy. I've lost most of my family, not to COVID, to mm -hmm. various other things. So I'm very aware of what grief does to people as, as well. And, you know, we mentioned about trauma and that it causes soul fragmentation. I call it when a piece of our emotional body steps aside. And it's called that saying, I feel like I'm besides myself right that's yes. where it comes from mm. well that's when the emotional body steps out that a lot of people out there will have had a death or something mm. like that and dealt with it and we go through the motions of organizing but we feel numb that's the soul fragmentation that's the emotional part that's besides us and allows us to deal with it and usually after maybe three weeks or so it will come back in once the funeral has been arranged and over but some people it doesn't come back in and some mm. people get trauma after trauma after trauma and they get fragmented and then they're suffering from constant anxiety, constant flashbacks, post-traumatic stress disorder and this type of thing. So this is the area that I specialize in having lost mm. um, out of nine members of my family, eight. Wow. Are gone. So, you know, from the I'm, same I'm thing or, or just different very, things? various things, various things from old age to cancer, to a heart attack, to mm. one was murdered, wow. um, brain aneurysm, you know, that, so lots of different things going on, but I do understand grief and trauma yeah. very much so because I've been on the receiving end of it. And that led me to do all the studying that I've done because I wanted to be able to help people that had suffered trauma myself and it and I didn't realize until I I started to do all that studying I thought, yeah well I tick that box I tick that box mm. I tick that box so my trauma has helped me become a better therapist and healer yeah because I'm not just sharing textbook information with people I've been there I know what it feels like and I know how it, it fragments the subtle bodies, the mental body, emotional body, spiritual bodies, and how um, it can pull in the multidimensional stuff as well. Oh, boy, that, yeah. mm. you know, so it, people go through stuff because it's in their DNA and it's playing out again. The same old program is playing out again. So I actually take people into their DNA to switch those programs off and deactivate programs that have been repetitive in their system with disease and all sorts i've got some amazing results with it so um actually you mentioned fibromyalgia my understanding of that is it's it's very much um people say past lives parallel lives multi-dimensional life trauma in the body trying to release itself as well so that might be something to have, you know to look into yeah i know i've done a lot of releasing i have yeah. apparently 50 lifetimes of torture because I've always been a spiritual empath. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, I've been dunked, I've been torn and quartered, I've been hung, I've yeah, been everything. Yeah. So this lifetime was a lifetime to get rid of all of that. So, exactly. You know, this lifetime was a, 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 to release myself from all of that and go back into my meaning, spiritual purpose. Um, and, uh, you know, my next lifetime, I won't be carrying that baggage with me. Exactly. You know, that's what I like about your title of the, the conscious architect, because when we look at architecture, we think of building things but we don't realize is that we are a structure and that we exactly. need to piece ourselves back together and put ourselves back together and you know you can look at some architecture and and they're just designed to let you know the the chill come in and the heat go out you know they're just not designed very well and you look at a passive house where it's designed to keep everything in and be self-sufficient we can be that person too, can't we? It, with the yeah. right right structure, the right blueprint. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
my um, my title comes from a- actually 18 years in architecture, designing buildings and so on and so forth. And then I had a, my crisis when my I lost my father when I was 36. That was 17, 18 years ago. Um, so and that's when the turning point came in my career change for me. So I you know I went from being an architect to therapy and healing and all this other stuff. And that's where the, the term, the consciousness architect mm. came from. So it kind of, it worked. I learned how to take things apart, put them back together. And now I do it with people instead of buildings. Right. So. Yeah. Same, you know, the same principle behind it, right? Yeah. Is yeah. that we forget that this body is a house. And we have different rooms in it for emotions and, and for experiences, etc. And if we don't, If we don't, uh, you know, it's like having, you know, the, uh, I'm kind of remembering Psycho. (laughs) With with Mother in the back. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock, (laughs) you know, with Mother stuffed in a chair downstairs. And it's like, you don't want that in your house. (laughs) But you may be carrying something like that unknowingly. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. You may have an imprint of of it. Um, You know, going back into things like people that have been traumatized, let's say, sexual abuse rape something like that in this lifetime it could be in a past lifetime that they were raped that imprint is still in the dna the memory is still in the templates of the subtle bodies and because it's in there as a program it's rerunning that program and will bring another victimizer in yes so this is the importance of getting deep into the consciousness is the field around the chromosome and that is the software in the machine it's the invisible software in the machine and the chromosome is like the dna so the analogy i use with people it's like the software in your laptop and the laptop is the chromosome so you can't change it by scribbling on the screen you have to go into the consciousness into the software and switch those programs off defrag take the viruses out, call it what you will. Yeah. Um, and that changes your reality. And that's what's going on at the moment. People are being forced to get deep inside and take out all of this old control, giving your power away, manipulation, and you know the, the stuff that's going on at the moment. So people really need to, to take a deep look into themselves. And so they can say things like, not in my reality. And imagine yeah. pressing reset. Treat yourself like your, you know, your consciousness is your program, not in my reality reset, mm. you know, and take control of it. And I do not consent to this mm. and reset. As people have given their power away, they seem to forget that the government are paid by the people to work right. for the people. Right. It's not the other way around. You know, people are letting their employees who, you know, haven't got all of the information, tell them what to do mm. and, and lock them in their houses. I don't agree with it personally. Um, I, I agree with being safe, but I think it's going uh, too extreme that yeah. is causing more harm than good. Well, the trouble is, is that you've got the people that are complying, that are following, you know, the, the, the protocols and you've got other people that aren't. And, and that's where the conflict comes in. And I think the people <clears throat> that resist or in almost a way they're inviting the malware. You know, mm-hmm. and it's malware is damn hard to get rid of. <laughs> you know, there's an awful lot of programming that has to be deleted there. And uh, when you're angry and mad at everybody else, it is the anger and madness that's within yourself. You don't like who you are, where you are, why you are in this present time. So instead of being angry at everybody else, we have to turn into ourselves, have a good talk with our mirror and go, well, what are you angry about? Is it something that's happening in our time? Is it a past memory? Have you always had this feeling? Has it just been triggered? What are we going to do about it? Reverbage for a start, mm-hmm. right? You know, seed, water, and nurture what you want to grow and stop feeding what is not serving you. Exactly. Because, because you know, you're going to let that carry on growing if you keep feeding it. Yeah, exactly. And this is the problem with social media. There's so much negative information being fed through that into mm. people. And we, we manifest more of what we focus on. So people need to start stop watching the bad news and yeah. start watching stuff that's going to lift your spirits and, you know, make you feel happier. And, OK, if you if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I'm kind of on the fence with it, really. If I need to go to the supermarket to get in to buy food, I'll wear a mask, but I'd rather not. They do make me feel very uncomfortable. Um, I had to wear one when I was getting my hair cut yesterday and I started really overheating. I felt like my head was going to explode. 
Um, so it, it did bother me, you know, when I was doing that. But to, I don't like the idea of people turning against one another right. venomously over it. Let, right. We need more acceptance in the world. And let Live and let live. Yes. You know? and, and the thing is, is that when somebody is angst, it's they're dealing with stuff. Yeah. You know, you might not be able to physically or emotionally help them, but you can send them some white loving light. You can send them some positive energy. They may not know where it comes from, but if enough people send that positive energy to them, it's going to filtration through in some way. Yeah. Um, because that's sometimes the only way you can help some people when they're just so combustible, it's dangerous to be near them. But if you just keep sending them that positive energy, maybe that energy will get through and help them defuse. Yeah. Well, the more energy people bring in, the more light they bring into right. themselves that emanates naturally anyway. It's just, you know, trying to maintain that whole, you know, hold on to that, that n neutral energy. I call it neutral because that's where I, I like to be. I, I like to, you know, not pick sides now. It's I've moved on from that because I realize that separation is one of the biggest problems on the planet. So, yeah. you know, the, the being neutral is really important part of my life and a part of, you know, what I share with my students as well. And there are going to be times we get pulled off to one side yeah. and the other side. And it's OK. You know, it's OK to do that. No one's perfect. We wouldn't have incarnated if we were perfect. Mm. We're here, you know, yes. we're here to, <laughs> to improve. You know, people need to accept their shadows and love their shadows and, and move forward and try and accept everyone else's as well. You know, everyone's struggling. We're all moment. in a process, aren't we? We're yeah. all in a process of becoming, of, of, of rising up, you know, of becoming a, a, a higher vibration. We know yeah. that the higher the frequency and the vibration, the more caring, kindness and loving we are. And we can't yeah. knowingly do any harm to anyone else because it's against our energy grain to do so exactly right but it's getting people there and we can't help those that are unwilling to help themselves other than sending them loving energy but the more we help ourselves we then become that light and that exuberant energy that reflects and ripples out onto everyone else therefore becoming an, an invitation for them so yeah. we owe it to ourselves to be the best that we can be and rise up because we now become that energy source for others yeah well, we do. The more we work on ourselves, because the world around us is a projection of ourselves, the world around us changes. You know, so people need to understand that they're the center of their universe. Every single one of us is the center of our own reality perception. That's 7.8 billion people, the center of their own create, creation. That's coming from their DNA and the consciousness of their DNA and the imprints that they've inherited from their ancestral lineage. And not just the human ancestral lineage, there's a soul ancestral lineage as well. Yes. So, you know, that the people that are into the healing process will understand this more, that sometimes there are soul wounds that need mm. to be healed that are not quite as obvious as yep. the other trauma. You know, we do have soul traumas as well because of genocides and things like yes. that. They traumatize people on a deep, deep soul level. So even bringing the light into their own soul for healing there, because some I know people that are being so distressed by the trauma of humanity because they're empaths themselves. Yes. <laughs> it's they're a challenge. Up on, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're picking up on everyone else's anxiety. Yep. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's it, it, it grasping. There's a lot of people drowning in it at the moment, yeah. making the mill physical body pains all over, aches and pains all over. There's hate coming out. There's generational hate coming out of people's body, which is giving them aches and pains. There's old war programs coming out of the bones where people's spines and, you know, shoulder bones and pelvis and or they're, they're, they're releasing it on a really deep level. And it gets misconstrued as a physical problem. Right. When it's actually, a, it's a spiritual energetic problem. So a lot of these people would probably benefit more from going to see a healer than they would taking painkillers. Yes. Or so, you know, or something else. Like get the energy out because yeah. it, everything is energy. So. Um, and I think, yeah. you know, we're all, if you look at it as a cellular structure, there are trillions of cells in our body. Right. And they all have a job to do. So look at the universe, look at this planet and each 
person. We've all got a job to do in order to keep the humanity on this planet, you know, plump and juicy and healthy. Yeah. Now, if one of those cells starts breaking down, it has a negative effect on the cells around it. And then you start seeing a domino effect of things breaking down. And this is what we're yeah. seeing right now, a huge breakdown in the cellular structure of humanity on this planet. Yes. And the planet is rebelling against this. They're saying, get your act together, start rising up, start healing your cell. And, it, you know, we, we keep looking to everyone else to fix us. We mm -hmm. can have people like yourself guide us with the right skills and tools into fixing ourselves. But part of our journey here on life is to learn how to become whole and let go of our past and step into our meaningful purpose, be that energy that is a contribution. And we need each and every one of us, our juicy cell to be that, don't we? Yes, we do, absolutely. It's like I said earlier, that we're all the center of our own reality, but there is a collective consciousness experience happening. And that's in, if you read about the Maharishi effect, it's the square root of 1% of the population of the planet. Based on 7.8 billion people, it's about 8,500 people. Once 8,500 people hit a certain level of enlightenment and plateau and frequency, that has a knock-on effect to the mass consciousness, the mass experience. And that's where we're going at the moment. There's a lot of people that are really working hard to cleanse their DNA, upgrade their, their systems. But they, you know, they can, there's more that can be done. Yeah. And it's a lot simpler than people think. I say to people, when it rains, ask one to bless the rain. Yes. So everything gets blessed. It's as yes. you know, simple as that. When you play any, when you play classical music, ask one to spread that music around the whole planet into the atmosphere. Send that musical vibration into the water, into the food. You know, I don't send directly to people without their permission, but I put it into the atmosphere with the intent. You know, they can breathe it in if they want to. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, it's giving it's giving people simple things that they can do um, to empower you know, the, themselves and setting their attention when they do healing on themselves, that they're healing their ancestral lineage mm. and things like that. If they could also understand that when you're in a state of hate and anger and disconnect, it takes so much fuel to maintain that. Mm -hmm. And when you step onto the other side, where you're stepping into, you know, living in that beautiful harmonious vibration, you are in that deep breath you're yeah. in if you want to know what peace is it is that beautiful deep breath where you feel at one with one yes. you are part of you your beautiful individual self and all that you are and the beautiful gift that you've been given to share here is part of that collective energy empowering you and it takes less energy to be that yes. than it does to be <laughs> angry and mad Absolutely. all the time right yeah, absolutely. It's much easier. I used to, years ago, um, I used to know a Scottish guy called Billy. And Billy's saying was, it's nice to be nice. <laughs> yes. And his lovely Scottish accent, he I, used to say, it's nice, nice, to, nice to, be nice. to be nice all the time. And I thought, you know, it's so easy. Yes. It's easier to be nice than to be nasty. Because when you're nasty to somebody, it, it like, affects your whole nervous system. Your whole body yes. gets, you know, gets upset just even smiling at people and that's the other problem with the masks at the moment you yeah. can't even see people you smile with the eyes with your eyes yeah. <laughs> yeah you need to be smiling with your eyes and, yes. and people you know people picking up on it but he's still sending the vibration yes even if they can't see the yeah. smile i mean there are some funny masks out there with smileys yes. on them so yeah. yeah you know that makes up the difference but I I got into um, sharing with people, giving them tools that they you know they can use for themselves. Like you say, to bring one in, ask one to bless the water every day, mm. ask one to bless all the food on the planet every day. You know, it makes a difference, and it's simple. It's stepping into gratitude, isn't it? Yeah, if we're grateful for for what we are and who we are, where we are at this time and place of what we have instead of looking at what we can't and who we aren't and what yeah. isn't available to us, it's again, feeding the hate or feeding the love. When you look at everything that you do have and what you still have the ability to do, then you step into that gratitude and you know that you are at one with one and you're yeah. just being guided along your path. Um, I'm going to go back to breath for a second. Again, as an asthmatic, um, 
I once had an asthma attack in the middle of a show, fortunately with oh, a woman wow. who was mother of 15. And she's just saying, it's all right, dear, just be calm, dear. And I never seen myself have an asthma attack. And here I am on video. And I didn't realize I contorted my entire body just crunched right up, you wow. know, the face, the body and everything, because you are oh, gasping yeah. for breath. I've literally yeah. lost breath. And not only was it horrific to see it, of course, cut it out, but you know, um, she was terribly patient, bless her, bless her heart. But it made me think afterwards is that when you are in this anger, when you are so mad and pissed off at everything, you are mm -hmm. tensing everything up, you're losing your breath. Yeah. You are literally losing your breath. When you take that deep breath and you can allow your lungs to expand and it feeds the oxygen throughout the body and everything then begins to relax, you are able to see so much more around you that is positive than is negative. So our breath that we take for granted, if we only we could just relax, we would realize what a gift of breath is and just how stabilizing it is. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, share with people, anything you focus on for three seconds actually opens a portal to that mm -hmm. energy. So if you're focusing on anger or if you're talking ill of somebody, you're opening a portal for that negative hate, jealousy, envy, or whatever that, you know, the, the conversation was about, you're, you're opening a portal to let that into your field. So, you know, it's worth people thinking about that. Yeah. You mentioned it earlier about taking it personally. I, you, mm -hmm. Do you know Don Rune's four, uh, four key codes? No, uh, please share. Uh, speak your word with integrity, right? Don't take things personally. It's, mm -hmm. it's their reflection. It's not, who, you know, directly at you. Uh, don't assume, ask, and simply do your best from your perspective not by somebody else's expectation right mm -hmm. but don't take things personally you know um, i have an example of this right now I, I live with a wonderful 87 year old who still drives she would still work if she could she's stronger than i am you know Aww. memory's going but you know she's christmas she's a child we've already decorated you see the stuff is already <laughs> up uh, presents are wrapped she's watching christmas shows every single night it just brings her such joy and that simple joy and excitement is very very you know uplifting but yeah. because Christmas may not happen the way she normally has it. She's got her knickers in a twist, mm. right? And it's like, I keep having to say to her, you're worrying about something over there. Let's just feed today. Yeah. And then tomorrow will take care of itself. And it's not a concept she truly understands. It's not easy for people to <laughs> no. live in the moment. <laughs> no, you know, no. But it's all we have is the now. Exactly. That, that's all we've got. And, mm. see, and when you pull it, if you can master pulling yourself into the moment, life starts to get a whole lot easier. Yes. Yes. Because you're not, there's no resistance. There's no resistance at all. And, it, and if you do, I share with my students about pulling in the, pulling in the light of one in the morning, grounding it down into the earth, set your intention that I'm going to have another perfectly abundant day. Yeah. Yeah. And let it go and yeah. stay in the moment. And it's amazing what starts to happen. It's so easy. It, you know, they should be teaching this stuff in school. They should be. And in some cases they are, you know, you have, you have some that are more enlightened are teaching kids to be intuitive because yeah. when you look at our our indigo kids today they have so much more common sense um you know illumination and an ingenuity and and inventiveness um yeah. and come you know and just just the way they see things you know is let us not take that away from them by trying to have them conform to a system that's not working let mm -hmm. us feed and nourish that so that this can grow because they're an answer for tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we've, we've been brought up in a society where they make people who are academics feel like they're more important than the yeah. people that, yeah. that aren't academics. And yeah. most of my friends are, you know, they're very, very intelligent people. But the ones that have been labeled things like ADD and ADHD are geniuses. You know, mm -hmm. that they're... And, they can't spell. <laughs> so yeah. what? You yeah, I, I'm, I'm one of those people, dyslexia. And, and because of my asthma, I missed a great deal of schooling. And, you know, I grew up in an academic family. And it was like, well, let's just hope she makes a good marriage. 
Yeah. And, you know, because I didn't have the, the, the numbers or the labels or the initials behind me, um, it, you know, it, my work was not deemed important. That yeah. used to bother me. And I felt I had to prove myself. And then it got to a point of why? Because when I look at them, they're so hung up on the brain knowledge, the yeah. academic knowledge. They have switched off the wisdom, which comes from the soul that speaks yeah. to the heart in resonance, that invites the spirit into action and will allow the mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. They have forgotten the heart, soul and spirit's intellect. Yeah, well, this is the problem. When you get stuck into the level of intellect, it stops your spiritual development because only one half of you, the, the left side of the brain is in control, which is the masculine logistical yeah. side. And it, this is the way it has to be. And then you're losing the creative, intuitive side of the right side of the brain, the feminine. So that's what's happening at the moment. More and more people need to be balancing their divine masculine, divine feminine um, I actually made an audio that balances the brain and repairs neuropathways. Mm, needed, um, needed. And that, yeah, you need to put that on a loudspeaker out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's important that people realise that, that that we've gone to. I mean, we used to live in a matriarchal society, um, and I think the problem was some the the feminine the the divine feminine maybe became a bit too soft. Yes, and then the patriarchal came and took over. And, you know, women's rights were stripped away for a long, long time. We all know that. The yes. people like us were burned as witches for 400 yes. years. Yes. Um, and now we're going back. It's got to go back. It's got to, it's got to come back into balance. But it's yes. not about women taking over. It's about the women finding their divine masculine and bringing themselves into balance and the men divine, finding their divine feminine and bringing that back into balance and then working together. Yes. You know? We've all got the masculine and feminine energy. Right. And, uh, you know, most of the time our DNA, if it's if it's feminine, is going to be more feminine. Um, yeah. I'm considered um, a fighter, a warrior. Um, a bit, my energy comes across to many people like that. But yeah. I considered it, you know, very much. It comes from a place of I'm a warrior over the healing, the caring, the love, uh, the kindness that, that it being out there. And it's OK to have that because Absolutely. if you if you are the the male warrior and the female then you're butch or you're too much uh right or, or if you're soft and, and you're not defending then you're too mushy and yeah. it's like you know life is about the balance yes but if we stop taking you know stop looking at the percentages of things and then and see people for the gift that they're giving for the gift mm -hmm. that they are then we will understand that their ingredient in this dish of life is just right just right yeah and there, and there are things that you know women can do to bring back their power and mm -hmm. There is a friend of mine read a book called Womb Wisdom. I can't remember the author's name now, but she talks about as we most of us have been taught to speak from our heart mm -hmm. to the people. Well, this in this book, it teaches women in particular to speak from their womb, to mm -hmm. send a channel down yes. through the womb. And the reason for that is because when we speak from our womb, creator is coming through right in the vibration. It's a different frequency. Yeah. And people are more likely to listen because it's coming from that vibration or space. Whereas, you know, over the years, our voice has been stripped away. This last century has been very much about women stepping back into their power. And it's happening more and more. We've got presidents and prime yes. ministers that are female all over the yeah. world now coming yes. through. My only hope is that they are coming from the right place and haven't become too much into this masculine control manipulation and, you know, corruption energy, which women are just as susceptible yeah. to as men. You know? Yes. Well, we went I don't through... like it. You know, people blame men all the time. And yes. There's some lovely men in the world. Right, there are. You know, it, it's and, not, and all, you know, it's not right to trapped. blame. No, and they're just as trapped in, in this, this um, persona of what they should be and how oh. they should react and how tough they've got to be and how ruthless they've got to be. I've done yeah. a numerous amount of business shows and you know they're all saying that the business today is that it has to come, people planet before profit. Mm -hmm. If you invest Absolutely. in the people, invest in the planet, really care about the people that you're representing that are working for you, the resources we're taking from the planet and really be mindful of that, the profit will come. 
but mm -hmm. we've had profit at the expense of people and planet for at least 100 years and it it's yeah. raped and pillaged our planet it's raped and pillaged our soul and mm -hmm. i actually do have a wonderful show on on soul womb where somebody deals from that completely um yeah. you know coming from our soul womb of that mothering I think one of the reasons why women most certainly are coming up into the forefront right now is that we are stepping into our mothering um, because the world needs that mother's love right now. But mm -hmm. also mother is also the disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mother is saying, "Ah, uh -uh, I'm not going to tolerate that behavior. You yeah. be nice to each other, share your toys. Yes. Right. And, you know, we're, we're seeing more of that common sense and that balance come forward. It's not just about the huggy kissy and I'm going to kiss you all better. It's also holding you accountable for your actions. So you yes. learn to do better. Yeah, I agree completely. It's I try and empower women to, you know, be strong and don't be frightened of your power. Stand mm. up and, you know, speak up. Don't let people take advantage of you. But also, you know, with the men, there's a lot of men that need that help as well at the moment because they've, yes. their, they've lost their way. They don't know how to, you know, is this too manly? I've had men say to me, what do women want? Mm. And I go, well, I can't really give you an exact answer for that, but everyone's slightly different. But, you know, we want fairness and we want equality and respect. It's like top of the list, really. Well, um, treat treat us the way they would treat themselves right you know if, if they if they feel they have the right to the opportunities and etc cetera, etc cetera, then we also feel that yeah. we have that same right so it's like it doesn't matter what color you are what sex you are what orientation you are what economics you are if you have the ability then that ability should be looked at and not judged by the package it comes in. Exactly. And just because, you know, if they are in positions of power and corporations and things mm -hmm. like that, and something happens at school with their child and they have to, you know, have to go, accepting that that's part of life. Yes. Yes. You know. Mother first. Yeah. If, right. it, if, they were, if it was all single fathers and they had to go, there'd be no big deal. There wouldn't no. be, oh, here she goes, off, yeah. off, you know. It, that needs to stop. That judgment needs yeah. to stop. There needs to, you know, needs to be acceptance again. And that goes across the board with, a, you know, with culture, with races, with, you know, um, sexism, all of it. When I work with people, when I do talks in groups, um, I bring the light through, I bring one through to cleanse the DNA of primal fear, primal racism, primal sexism, primal paedophilia, which is still a problem on the planet, mm. um, primal war and primal terror, which it creates terrorism. All of these things are in the DNA. So I do mass healings and show people how to bring the light through and setting their intentions, what they need to clean out because using the outside world as a, a mirror so that that's their teacher. Mm. The outside world is there to show you yeah. what, you know, what needs to be cleansed. And it's powerful. You don't like it. What are you going to do about it? It starts yeah. with you. Right? Exactly. Acceptance of acceptance of what's going on out there is coming from our consciousness. Yes. But don't judge yourself for it because it's old programs and old paradigms that are deep, deep in the subconscious, in your bones, in your DNA, that need to be cleansed and healed so that we're living in a fairer society, a more balanced society, but the yeah. better system because the systems don't work at the moment. The whole, all of them are yeah. breaking down. But that's also good. You know, I, I yeah. like the Celtic runes, Haglas you know disruption mm -hmm. we need to break things apart you know sometimes you can renovate a house and sometimes you have to just demolish it and start again start again you know? yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know sometimes that innovation of of retaining some traditional culture about the building and and yeah. modernizing it and updating it is a wonderful marriage if we can do that but we're in that disruption right now and it's it's just like invite the wind Invite yes. the wind to clear it out because we know it's evident. Look at how disconnected we are, how dysfunctional we are as a human race and how much ability we really do have to live in, in cohesive harmony and ability if only we would stop feeding the wrong thing. So that yeah. disruption right now, I think, is the wake-up call that we all desperately need right now to change it up. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and to be clear in the separation programs that are going on, all this separation everywhere, you know, this is why I talk about one bringing in the light of one. And this came to me a few years ago now from going to God, the first source and center, the God of the Bible, the God of the Quran, yeah. all the multidimensional gods, because we're multidimensional beings. Yes. So then you go through the source. And when you move through the source, this was a, a meditation I was doing for three days a few years ago. And I was in this, I was out of my body and I was in this kind of round, like a Greek Athenian um, temple kind of place. And there was these white bearded, white robed men, spirits sitting around staring at this white orb in the middle. And I knew it was the source. And I, I went there for three days and then I remembered somebody saying to me, it's a brave man that goes beyond the source. So in my astral, I jumped into that source and it was like, poof. Yeah. And I went into the no thing, into the void of one. Isn't it beautiful? Fantastic. It's, Absolutely it's everything fantastic. and nothing. It's, it's, it's yes. beautiful. Yes. Complete euphoria, bliss. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. If you want to know what peace is, that is it. Yeah. Right? And that's it, what we need to be yes. bringing in. We need to bring mm. that energy in and unite everybody. It doesn't matter about what religion you are, what color you are, right. what sex you are, what you know, bring this energy in and accept other people. Don't be arrogant in that your way is better than their way. Yeah. You know, yeah. Although this you're door, more superior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's ingrained. I know. It is in, it's, the it's, human, it's, in, it's the human condition. <laughs> yeah. But if people can get into that one space and, you know, yeah. focus. Yeah, at the moment, I'm sharing with my students, right, go, do your breathing exercises go to the white light bring the white light down but then i'm showing like go to the white light and open a hole in the middle of it into the void yeah and pull that clear black energy down through you yes i had students write to me a few years ago and go notice the energy's gone from white to black is that okay i'm like how does it feel and they said it feels like bliss mm -hmm. I said well it's okay then Yes, Just because to, you, know, you the are feeling. the light in the dark you don't need to have the light around you you become the light yeah, and I was sharing that information a few years ago. And then it, um, recently I came across an article, Design of Creation, I think it was called. And it talked about in the very beginning, there was the void and there was a particle mm -hmm. of substance, which was the female, and there was the breath, which was the male. And the breath became self-aware and the particle became self-aware. Then they just became aware of one another and they joined together, the male and female, and then poof, light, the source, they decided to multiply and mirror themselves. So you had mother, father, mm -hmm. God, multiplication mm -hmm. into the son, daughter energy and creation has been mirroring and multiplying since then. Obviously there was a fall from grace, which we know about, which is when the, you know, the mutation of the light and dark and the separation came in, but we're being taken back here yeah. to the absolute dawning of creation that goes beyond the, the God of the Bible and the God of the books, because we're into all this multidimensional gods then. And this is where I think there's all these different religions that think they're right because they've tapped into one or the other of these multidimensional ones and they're getting all this different information and thinking they're the right way. But it's like, no, they're, they're a byproduct of the, the void that's come through and multiplied itself. And if they all come together and share their experience, they realize they're all having the same experience from a different perspective. Exactly. Right. Different, you know, it's, yeah. it's all part of the feast, right? We yeah. don't concentrate on one ingredient. We look at yeah. all the ingredients that make up that feast, right? Yes. And all of those ingredients are important. Um, and it's, you know, maybe there's one ingredient that you like more than the other because you resonate with it, then that's fine. Yeah. As long as it is done purely in, in kind of the love vibration, in the goodwill vibration, then we're okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people can bring themselves into that their God is the, the child of one, then then the unity comes. It's like we can all unite and bring all of our gods to one. You know, and there, there can't be more than one, one. Everything right. has well, to the source. Come. It's the root. Yeah. It's the seed, right? Of yeah. which, Everything. you know, you yeah. look, you look at flowers. I mean, they grow their stem, they grow their leaves, they grow multiple petals. They have something in the middle. It all makes that flower. There is no yeah. one thing that's more dominant than the other. It cannot yeah. be without each other. 
Yes, exactly. And if people are believing that, you know, whatever their deity is telling them that they're better than someone else, they're listening to the wrong deity. Well, they're also listening to the human, uh, uh, in that that is a human condition. Yeah. To judge, to condemn, to control. Yeah. You know, that is that power that is being misused. It is not to empower, invite, and and, uh, compassionately combine. Yeah. And, and we've been taught that, you know, this wrathful God and the punishment yeah. is God punishing people. They're all old programs in the DNA as well that go way back to yes. when we weren't quite as, you know, and I use the word civilized loosely <laughs> as we are now. Um, so, you know, all of these old programs and patterns are, are playing themselves out in society as well. They need to be cleared. I've made, you know, I've made audios to clear old spiritual beliefs and old religious beliefs that may be holding us back. And that are deep rooted within there as well. So this unification is critical to the ascension of the planet over the next, you know, few. Couple, well, definitely, there's a big shift this month coming up in December. But over the next few years, lots of more people are going to be realizing this and expanding into that divine bliss euphoria that you've experienced and yes. i pull in every day yeah yeah exactly you know come on in the waters are great <laughs> yeah so what advice can you give people right now to navigate not only through this particular period you know and open up to what is to come you know but the mindset they need to have for 2021 and then also how do people get hold of you okay well Personally, I would use the natural, um, the water, so maybe a nice salt bath if you're stressed and imagine the salt coming in and cleansing you, purifying you. Go out in the wind if it's windy, get outside in the sun and ask the sun to clear any old programs that are not serving your highest good. The, you know, all this natural stuff is going on. I've made 35 audios on my website that help with various things on there as well. Soul fragments we talked about earlier. There's one that brings in three soul fragments. Um, And try and practice being accepting of what's going on with other people rather than judging them as well. It's a big one at the moment. Yes. Um, And standing up, take, you know, taking your power back. If Mm. you disagree with something, stand up with there's the world freedom Alliance. Have you heard of the world freedom Mm. Alliance? You know, there are people, very intelligent, bright people coming together, telling the truth of what, what's going on. And we're looking for new new politicians to come forward, mm-hmm. that, you know, are enlightened and are for the people right. and not pretending, pretending to be for the people. Yes, so, yeah, this stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're manifesting it as yeah, we speak. We are. You know? yeah. So we planted the here, seeds for watering. Yeah. Let's ask the audience, is it your intention to live in a free world with a fair government guiding for the people? You know, and all they need to say is yes, and they've set their intention. That actually changes your DNA. You're right. It changes yes. your consciousness. Power yes. of intention is very, very powerful stuff. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to share. My website's crystalkey.com, which is probably in your information below. Yes, it could be up on the um, video as well. Okay, thanks very much. People can contact me there. Best to um, send me a message on my through my website. And I'm also on Facebook if people want to connect on there as well. With your name or with Crystal Key? Just my name, Janine Regan Sinclair. Okay. And, uh, and they can have a few minutes with you to see if there's a synergy um, for your programming? Yes. I, if people want to ask me any uh, questions, uh, you know, happily connect with me i'm also on instagram as well janine regan sinclair all one word if people want to connect on there so um yeah well we need this right now i mean as you said the the new energy source is coming in i've been saying now for years that every now and again they just turn us up a notch and another notch and another notch because they couldn't do it they couldn't do it all in one go We, we would combust it is that invitation to rise up invitation to rise up invitation to rise up and another energy source is coming in to help us rise up and if we welcome that and dive right into it you know all of those things that we're asking Uh, or confused about will be clear but you know it is kind of surrender and uh, and as you said the verbiage your intent and your heart soul um you know 
language and perspective needs to go out there, feeding what you want to grow and stop even giving any credence or crumbs to what you don't want to have in your life. Yeah, exactly. And there's, there's some um, YouTube, I made some little YouTube videos um, as well. We've got free healing in for people. So excellent. You know, they can get some help to balance their male and female and that kind of thing. So there's some stuff on YouTube if people, you know, want to try them. Um, the audios are not expensive either. They're only $5.99. Yes. And so that's crystalkey.com. They can find it all yeah. over there. Crystalkey.com. Excellent. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, um, you know, people can give a gift of, of a couple of audios or a video to someone and just say, I know how stressed you out you are. Here's a gift. Take a listen, absorb it, let it soak right in and just help you, you know, find that balance and that equilibrium because we can't see any solution. We can't feel any solution when we're mm -hmm. all crunched up and tight. So take that breath, allow the wind to blow things away, allow the water to cleanse you, allow the sun to rejuvenate you and yeah. just allow yourself to move forward in the light that you want to move forward in, right? Absolutely. And if there's anyone out there just really struggling because financially, because of COVID, if they send me an email, I will give them free access to one of my audios for a week. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That's very, very okay. generous. Wonderful having you on here, love. Thank you so okay. much for sharing with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Really my, enjoyed my it. My pleasure. Until next time, folks, remember the answer is always in, inside of you. You are never alone. Source one energy is always there with you. It's up to what you feed. It's up to what you project. It's up to what you say to yourself. You are the answer that we are seeking in the world. So please spend time on you because we need you and you need yourself. Until next time. Bye for now. We hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.